Welcome to the Streamy award-winning podcast, Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Helbig, and I'm very excited today because I have a fellow amazing podcast host, Jay Marie, with us today. She's doing this podcast called The Dream. If you haven't heard of it yet, please go check it out. It is um, about what you might refer to as pyramid schemes, though she legally cannot say any of that. Uh, but we're going to get into it and also learn a lot about um, you know, her love for rappers' wives. There's a whole spectrum of conversation that you're about to dive into. So enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep with Jay Marie. Not, not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by our great buddies at Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. They make it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. With beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything, you can easily make a beautiful website all on your own. But if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash grace for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Yay! Jane Marie. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Um, I'm very excited. One, I not to expose you, Jack, but Jack's a huge fan. Uh, of, of mine? Of yeah, yours, no, yeah. Oh, Jack, thanks. Why? And, well, for what? <laughs> Jack, go on. Uh, well, I like the Dream Podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. We've been obsessed with it. My mom was an Avon lady. And really? so, yeah, yeah. So it resonates with me and like the tiny lipsticks and all that growing up. And my mom like filling out and having to pay for her own stuff every week because she didn't make her quota. Do you remember the matchstick eyeliner? It was like a matchbook. Yes. And you peeled one off and then it was yes. like a single use eyeliner yes. to test the color. And you're like, this isn't actually what eyeliner looks like. No, right? not but at all. We were kids. Um, OK, this is a question that I've started asking everyone. It might make you uncomfortable. I have a little discomfort in answering this for myself. But how do you describe what you do to some like if an alien came down and you had to explain like what you do and how you operate in the world? What would you say? Um, uh, oh God. I know it's you a know little overwhelming funny is like when I started working at NPR at This American Life mm -hmm. that was like the impossible task yeah. was if people hadn't heard of the show to be like okay so well it's kind of a radio show but then sometimes we do these weird stories that aren't news and right, then right, there's right. like occasionally there's poetry and then there's like weird guy in Puerto <laughs> Rico or whatever and they're like okay yeah that doesn't sound like a real job um <laughs> I actually had a friend say, as long as you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so weirdly passive. I know. Uh, like, yeah. oh, man, I guess I'm not happy if you're telling me that. I always say I make radio, but that's wrong because nobody says radio anymore. Right. You but know? it is that. But I'm I like, mean, I've been working in radio for 20 years. I make the voice part of radio. Right. All right. Um, you do the radio part of radio. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The actual like true way it started. But I'm not on the radio. But, anymore so now i say i podcast but that could mean even more things right that whole i mean this is technically a podcast supposedly <laughs> by standards and practices um how did you okay you lived in chicago mm -hmm. and i saw in like this whole like research scenario that you dropped out of high school but then you went to the university of illinois mm -hmm. uh and it then, wasn't a direct jump from like high school dropout to it was a winding yeah, I got there eventually. A little, a little nobody, course yeah, nobody would let me in for a while. I would go to interviews at colleges and they would be like, okay, so we see here, um, did your junior year, what happened? And I'm like, you're, you're going to have to ask my parents um, or just like, I don't remember um, what happened. And then, and then they were like, okay, we'll call you. And they never did. I Ugh. think I was a bad investment to certain <laughs> institutions. Um, so then I just did like, I took an airbrushing class at a community college. You took an auto air wait, airbrushing, you took an auto airbrushing class me? at a community college, and then please go into more detail about what that is. <laughs> it was so awesome. It was like an auto airbrushing. Yeah, like putting class. the like flames on the side of a van. Or <laughs> I, I, <laughs> look, I'm an artist. Okay, my art, my artistic interests know no bounds. Um, uh -huh. No, I did that, and then I. <laughs> So, I, I mean, just, yeah, I did that. Let's so toss do you that moonlight off. at like West Coast Customs now during the daytime? I wish. That would be so fun. Ugh, um, I just want one of the masks. They feel so good and like secure. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I did that. And then I had to like actually take like, you know, basic prereq classes. Right, right, and right. I think I was like a sociology class. And that's when I was like, oh, school isn't bad. Oh, uh, yeah. great. Okay, cool. Wait, 
maybe I should reconsider this airbrushing thing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. It's a good tool to have, a good school, skill set to have in your resume. Um, okay, but then you started interning at NPR, right? right. Mm-hmm. How did that happen? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm a huge advocate. Like, I... School is not necessarily for everyone, mm-hmm. but I think like real world experience is mm-hmm. like really important. Like I had like six internships in my undergrad because I was just like, I don't, I need, I want to know how to work when I get out of school. Well, I had four jobs in college okay, or five. I don't remember. The local news came and did a story about me because they were like, <laughs> see how hard it is for people to go to college or whatever. And I was like, this place is basically free. You guys are making a big deal Wait, out of nothing. Even, it's like they, a <laughs> shitty state school, but um, yeah, they came and like filmed me in my campus jobs, which were like three of those. And then my bartending at night and blah, okay. blah, blah. Um, one of my campus jobs was working at the radio station. Oh, cool. Um, and then by accident once, like my last semester of college, I was driving home to Michigan because my, fam- my family's from Michigan, as you might know, if you listen to the dream mm-hmm. and I would go home on weekends and it's like a three hour drive. Um, and this was pre podcast. So I was yeah. like listening to NPR and I heard this show and it was about, um, it was a John Hodgman piece I found out later about a uh, oh. Cuervo man, like a friend of his okay. that became the Cuervo guy that like you do like, shots off his bald head or something yeah. at like spring break in Panama <laughs> City. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, he's like a professional partier. Right. And I oh. listen, I turned the radio on and this is on and that's the face I was making the whole time. Like, is this <laughs> pirate How? radio? Like what <laughs> happened to my radio? <laughs> what is this? And I listened all the way to the end and then it was like, it's this American life. And then I was like, okay, that was a weird experience. And Mm -hmm. the next time I got to a computer, um, I Googled it and they had an internship. And so I just started listening to episodes and like writing my internship application at the same time. And I think because (laughs) I, I later went on to like run the internship program and I cannot believe I got this internship. Like I do not all, what it was is that I was there and I knew Pro Tools. Okay. Like that's what it was. I took one class in Pro Tools Mm -hmm. and it was overwhelming to me in undergrad that I was like, I'm good. Uh, I'll just like settle with Final Cut Pro X right now. That's great. I mean, but having that kind of skill, being Mm -hmm. a woman at that time, which was like 15 years ago, yeah, um, 16 years ago, I think that went to my advantage, sure. you know, that I'm a, I'm a woman who knows pro tools. Um, mm-hmm. and I was an early adopter of that one. So I think that, and then I was just right down the street so I could start like oh. the next day. <laughs> like you <laughs> can walk here. But then um, when I became the hired. director, it was like people are flying from Brown. Like, Oh, I've been following Ira's career his entire life. And I'm like, I did not know who this guy was. That's so <laughs> nice. I applied. Wow. Um, so I'm very, very, very lucky. And then it just so happened that they had like some snafu with the scheduling with the next intern. And so I got to stay longer and ingratiate myself further and kind of become part of the wallpaper. That's what I did too. I literally was like, don't be problematic. And they won't even know you're here if they keep letting you come into the building. If they keep re-upping your access on your Don't be problematic. (laughs) Oh man, I forgot that one. Yeah. (laughs) But I think that's helped you. Okay. So the dream, Mm -hmm. this is your, the newest endeavor that you've been. It's fully out there now. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's basically, you cannot say explicitly that it's like, um, I guess, investigating the concepts and ideas around possible pyramid scheme type of scenarios. I can't say that. Can't say that. Um, it, <laughs> so go listen to it for yourself. Yeah. Uh, but how did this come about, this idea? Because it seems like a very personal issue and very personal topic for you. It came about Laura Mayer, who's a uh, producer at Stitcher, mm-hmm. um, had the idea kind of just vaguely general, like, this is a weird world, right? And she was shopping around for producers. So I produce for other people as well. I'm not always on the air. Um, And so we had a chat about it and I just did like my gossipy thing. Like my grandma did. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at my Facebook feed from Flint, Michigan. Like everybody's doing it. Uh-huh. And um, so I think they had an internal discussion and we're like, this is, let's get it. It's a twofer. Yeah. Let's have Jane do it. <laughs> we, so, we got one. Yeah. 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 Um, That's it. So how it's long? Been have, fun. Yeah. How long have you been working on it? How long a is year. Like a full year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we started reporting in earnest, like in January. So um, and I've made multiple trips home yeah. to interview my family and How's friends. How's that been? I mean, because I... It's been awesome. It's like so nice to be able to visit my family <laughs> And then work. like on a work dime. Yeah. yeah you're like, yeah. I don't have to pay for my own flight back home. Great. It's also been a little nerve wracking. I've never... I won't say I've never done this to my family before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you fully. I have fully uh, exploited my mother for views on YouTube. My dad is the best 
my dad isn't on this show, unfortunately, but my mm-hmm. father is just like a quote machine. Like he just oh, yeah. does the most, I mean, he's just wonderful on the radio. <laughs> I adore him. Um, and so, and I have hit up friends, but like friends who are in this sort of this world. Sure. So going into people's homes who've like maybe never heard a podcast right. or don't know what I've been doing for the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. But according to like our super, superlatives in junior high, I was supposed to be on like the, you know, Geraldo or whatever. <laughs> um, just some, some <laughs> Oprah uh, yeah. as a, you know, as a, as a guest <laughs> with problems. Um, so that's been weird to have to like do the thing that you were asking. What I, what would I say to an alien? Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of that over and over again. Like, just trust me. Yeah. And, this is going to be fine. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. won't feel good for a little while. But What's been the most, I mean, because I'm sure you can go in with, you know, when you're producing things like this, like this podcast is obviously just a conversational thing. Mm-hmm. But like when you go in with a, a show idea like that, mm-hmm. like you have a hypothesis, but you don't fully, you can't like predict necessarily like the entire story. At right? All. No. And yeah. This so whole, how do you even go into this that? thing has changed so many times. Right. Like, so you have to be flexible and kind of move with it. Constantly like adding more episodes or like let's re arrange the entire order of shows based on this thing that happened and then also when it comes out into the world like Mm -hmm. because it's a weekly release like you kind of listen to it and you go like oh I know what needs to happen next and you didn't realize it this whole year oh that's (laughs) the next episode needs to be so there's just yeah it's kind of an ever-evolving um process I think we knew I think the things we knew going in is that it feels um a little sketchy the world of it like I feel I felt like just looking at my Facebook and Instagram I, when I see these ads or like my friends trying to sell me stuff, I'm yes. like, you know, you kind of bristle a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so that was worth exploring yeah. just to see if I was being an asshole or right. if they were being, you know, taken advantage of in some way exactly. or whatever. So, um, so going in with that kind of like open-ended, but like, like you know, cynicism, genuine but question. like, yeah, yeah. The curiosity at the same time. Yeah. 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 And I, you know, also like, I talk about my great grandmother being an Avon lady. Like I have a lot of affection for my friends who are doing this. Yeah. It's like, I really like these people. <laughs> so I want, well, it really resonates with me because I felt, it feels very akin to like, um, the self-help world, like the, uh, which I've worked with a bunch of like self-help and like, they're closely, like, they're closely related. Yeah. And there's a lot of like pyramid scheme kind of, you know, structure to how that world operates. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was what was so fascinating to me because it's all people with like good intentions yeah, and that they just don't realize like the bigger picture of what's happening. Well, it actually, this type of business model, this multi-level marketing, um, came out of self-helpy stuff. Mm, okay. Um, the guys that started this way of working were from like these human potential movement, these like movements yeah. in the oh, early the first episode, 20th century. Yeah. The first episode of this podcast, what's that woman's name that you interview? Nan. Nan. Okay. I am team Nan. Uh, she can take all my money. <laughs> She's because the best. She, if you guys haven't listened to it, please just at least listen to the first episode. Cause this woman talks about this thing called the the airplane uh-huh. game, whatever. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And she talks about it so flippantly. And she talks about literally like having to basically like shake down like a mafia boss on the street for her <laughs> money for her kid's school. Like so casually that I'm like, who is this woman? How did you find this woman? Well, she's my friend's mom. <laughs> she <for> one. <laughs> is literally, I'm like, she's, she's a also, sociopath. She has no actual like at regret or feeling. She does though. That's the thing. Like she well, doesn't she has, have regret and feelings, I think for, I mean, I don't want to speak for her I think that she she knows they were all in on it together there wasn't like in her face somebody that was like you know necessarily getting hurt like even the guy at the end was still wanting to like be part of the airplane game she knew I mean she took advantage (laughs) of this like dumb thing from the get-go that I was like I appreciate man and every aspect of who she is okay so for people that haven't listened how do you explain the airplane game because I can't even fully understand it it seems so so basic who who described it to me because he was like a child and it was happening in his home Uh it's like okay picture like chairs set up in a triangle okay um and there's one in the front and then two behind that and then four behind that and then eight behind that okay you bring in to sit in the row of eight you bring in fifteen hundred dollars you don't even have to sit this is all done on paper a lot of it because it just goes really fast but what do you you mean you bring in like those people pay to sit in those chairs yeah or to take the place on a chart okay okay like this is mine yeah and they pay the people in front of them and then they pay the people in front of them with that money and then the top one walks away with twelve thousand dollars and everyone moves up a line and the end game is just to make money right there's no like what my question about it was like 
So once you get in the chairs, once you've like secured your chair, mm -hmm. do you, is there like um, you can be in many chairs, many airplanes at the same time. But so there's no like, but there's <laughs> no, like, but there's no like talk. You're not getting lectured to. You're not. Oh, I mean, getting, they like, did like some lectures about like the new economy and like you know okay. being a positive thing. It was kind of. It was, it reminds me a little bit of like the secret. And so yes. this was like the actionable part of the secret, you know? Oh. So it is like vision boarding, but then also let's make a lot of money while we're yeah. vision boarding somehow. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, what was most shocking to me is that she wasn't the only person we were talking to that got involved in this. Yeah. I was like, I have never heard of this before. How are two people that we're interviewing totally separately for this show like I got off the phone with her for during our pre-interview and yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, okay, it's called the airplane game. And then Dan <laughs> goes, what? And I was like, it's called the airplane game. And he's like, hang on. And he went back through his transcripts with his interview with Robert and was like, Robert did the airplane game. And so we were like, whoa, oh my God. this is so crazy. Yeah. It's so, I know I'm shocked that I hadn't heard of it before, but I feel <laughs> like I'm sure you probably you weren't get born yet. Yeah, I was just still <laughs> just putting on tiny lipsticks that my mom was selling through right. Avon by myself in her room. Right. Um, have you, I'm sure you've had a ton of people like come out of the woodwork and try to contact you about since the podcast has been out and like the stories that you've heard must be insane. It is, um, it's kind of infuriating because I'm like, why didn't you email me six months ago? Not right. that they would have known, but you know, we're halfway through the season and I'm like, oh, I, do, I totally want a whole episode about this one lady who had $34,000 worth of wholesale Lula Row leggings in her garage or whatever. Oh my <laughs> God. Um, you know, we hear, yeah, like every day we get emails now from people. And the really fun thing has been, and I'm hoping to like somehow contact these folks and maybe put them on the show. Um, a lot of people from corporate. Oh, really? Yeah. A lot of people who like worked in corporate for these companies saying, I wrote their compensation packets and their, I wrote their promotional materials and it's a, it's, you know, and I will go on the record and I have documentation. Whoa. Yeah. So that's been really, really that's fun. That's interesting. So is there potentially like a season two of this? Like There's a season two of the dream, Yeah, but probably not about this topic. Okay. We'll go into other Ooh, I'm very Weirdness. excited. I'm yeah. Very excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, has there ever been, um, I mean, I'm sure you've done so many interviews and pre-interviews and things like that. Has there ever been one that's been outstandingly bizarre to you that like either you couldn't use or was just like, I can't believe this is happening to me right now? Well, Nan was blew Nan's my mind. Fucking rock star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that woman so much. <laughs> I just want her to like wake me up every morning and tell me like, you're doing okay. <laughs> no, and I'm, I think like, you know, I, these are my friends and family, so I wasn't like surprised by them, but we have someone coming in Monday that I am like already having panic attacks about. Well, you can tell um, this won't go up until uh, way after. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it'll already have happened. Yeah. So who is So this? you guys know this? a lot more than I do right now about yeah. what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you people in the future. Um, but I'm speaking to you from the past. Um, so I'm having a lot of anxiety, like the true anxiety, because the... Um, the head of the DSA, which is the Direct Sellers Association, the lobby yeah. for all of these companies, is coming to my office on Monday, <gasps> and I just—I just got chills. I, I got just nervous wanna, for you. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I want to like tie him up <laughs> or something. I don't know. I just, okay. I want to. You should get him to bring fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, play I the should. airplane game. <laughs> no, I want to like no, just get Nan to shake him down. You know, like I want to pin his eyes open oh, and be gosh. like, "You have to listen to all of the tape I've got. Now what? You know? Yeah. He's not gonna, but Wait, he's, so you haven't interviewed him yet? No. As of now, when he we're offered, recording this, he, he, and that's what's like the baller move, which I'm really mad about. <laughs> oh, so he thinks he's getting ahead of it by like being like, "Hey, I'll be interviewed. I'll come yeah. talk to you." But yeah. really, it's like, no, you're a piece of shit. So I'm trying to figure out how <laughs> to, to nail him. Ooh, yeah. In a way, I think I'm just gonna start crying immediately. Yep. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I usually start my podcast. It's like making my guests feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. Um. Uh. That is well. Best of luck to future you. Thank you. I mean, you know, it's like it's the the main thing I makes me nervous about it is he's like the closest we've gotten to somebody who could do something about this. Yeah. And. And so you're like, how do I have a rational conversation with this person, but I also can't. express like your actual opinions about right. it based on everything that you've learned from yeah. all these people? Yeah. Because you now have to like, that's the crazy thing is you probably have to carry this weight of all these stories from everyone. Yeah, and have all these guys in Washington, D.C. and stuff be like, ha ha, shush, you know? Oh. And it's just that kind of, you know, it makes really... my stomach hurt <laughs> in a bad way. Oh, man. Okay. Well, 
On that note, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, um, I, I'm going to talk to you about your pure enjoyment of unsolicited dick pics. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back with more from Jane Marie on Not Too Deep. No, 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 I can hardly believe it. What's going on, Grace? I mean, I don't mean the pound the alarm, but we're sponsored by Squarespace. Today. Oh, what a shocker. Yeah, did you have a dream that you wanted to turn into a reality by chance? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. Well, we can do it with Squarespace. Fantastic. Yeah. These guys are our buddies. They've been sponsoring us for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we really do like them because they make it easier than ever to launch your passion project. We're talking about whether you're looking to start a new business, if you want to showcase your work, if you want to publish content, sell products, or more more, Squarespace is the tool for you. With beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And they have powerful e-commerce functionality that lets you sell anything online and analytics that help you grow your site in real time. As always, everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is super simple, and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people, from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms, and myself. And I, Jack Ferry. I use Squarespace, so I can attest that it works really well, and it's very easy. Perhaps and you've turned a great idea into something real? How did you know? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I did with Squarespace. And you guys, get this, can go to squarespace.com slash grace and get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash grace, offer code grace. Not, not too deep. Hey, Jack, guess what? What's up? This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by a brand new sponsor, though not a brand new concept. Yes, it's brought to us by the OkCupid okay app. Yeah, it's the only dating app that finds you someone based on who you are and what you are into. So guys, if you're unfamiliar, the OkCupid okay dating app asks you fun and meaningful questions that matter to you so you can be seen by the people who are going to be into you. Yeah, we got questions like, would you pay an extra $5 for guac? Or are you too close to your family? Did you <laughs> it says, vote in are the Are you last... close with your family? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I'm reading between the lines. I'm asking We know the, how you feel about I'm that question. I'm asking the meaningful questions that I want answered by the people on this dating app. <laughs> are you close to your family? Did you vote in the last election? You'll see tons of answers that lead to great conversation and great dates with people who feel the same way that you do. Tell people about your favorite album, your last great trip, your favorite podcast. Oh, for that's instance. a great conversation starter. I'll say. And let the love roll in with the OK Cupid app. Whether you're looking for that person to join you on a long walk on the beach or a short walk to the pool bar, they are waiting for you on this OK Cupid app. So start the new year by meeting someone who's into what you're into on the OK Cupid app. Download the free OKCupid app and find your next great date today. Seriously, lead with, are you too close to your family? <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about your joyous love of unsolicited dick pics. <laughs> I was asking Jack, because I was like, Jack, you love Jane. <laughs> Give me some like really interesting questions that you would want to ask. And he goes... Last, he gave me a bunch of things, and then he goes, "Oh, she also likes unsolicited dick pics." <laughs> no, what I said was, "You're the only woman I've ever heard say she enjoys getting unsolicited." I'm dick part yeah. of the problem, okay? I know <laughs> I am, okay, but maybe the problem. Tell I, could okay, be. Um, can you expand on this? Well, there because dicks are great. <laughs> don't yeah. know if you know that. <laughs> I've heard stories. <laughs> They're great. Um, that's pretty much it for me. They're uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> in line. And they're funny. Oh, yeah. And they I love funny things. They're very funny. They're very, I mean, they're. Especially the unsolicited ones. Like, I, oh, ones God, that are vetted so... that you know are great, you're like, sure, I'll take that. And then ones that are not vetted, you're like, well, this could be, this could go either <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nature versus nurture situation. What is going on here? Um, well, in line with that, let's talk about it. You had a Tinder podcast mm -hmm. called DTR. Mm -hmm. And so this was fully sponsored by Tinder. Yep. And it's called down, DTR down to relation, defining the relationship. See, I had that problem too the whole time. When we were trying to decide on the name, I was like, down to what? And everyone <laughs> in the office who was well, like 10 years younger than me was Jersey like, this is Jersey Shore a thing. has ruined like DTF <laughs> as yeah. like a whole like colloquial thing now that we refer to. Um, when did this come out? This is a few years ago. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And what was the scenario of this? Like the, the, so I had pitched a sex advice show to Gimlet, which yeah. is the, the network that the production house and network that we made this through. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they were like, well, it's not really on brand for us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we make like smart shows, uh, really good storytelling. And I was like, sex is smart or whatever. We'll figure it out. And they were like, no. (laughs) And then I think it was like two weeks later, they were like, hang on a second. Actually, we just got a call from Tinder. (laughs) And I was like, I'm on, I'm Uh on board. I'm in, I'm doing this. Um, and so that's how that went. And and then that kind of like launched my production company. Oh, very cool. Because we made it here and used a studio and all that stuff. And so we started building like a better studio and office to make our own things. Yeah. So now, I mean, I'm always curious about people that work in, you know, the new media, quote unquote space, whatever. Um, like what do you listen to? Like, what do you like old media? Like I'm in radio. Like I feel like I'm doing doing radio plays from the 1930s. Like that's my real job. We're going to have a piece of tinfoil that we're going to shake around and pretend yeah, there's a rainstorm Foley. in the I background. I artists around yeah. me all the time, please. Um, but what do you follow online or do you have, I'm always curious about like, I'm obsessed with French Bulldogs and I also have been recently deep diving into the world of hedgehogs on Instagram. It's mm-hmm. really cute. Um, but like, is there someone that you're obsessed with that you follow on social media or is there like a YouTube channel or is there something that you're like, this is my go-to? Honestly, when you have a five-year-old, like your own ideas about what's funny on the internet kind of get (laughs) usurped by really adorable things. Yeah. What is she into? Um, funny animal videos, which I love with her. Um, we could also face filter all day. Oh yeah. Um, We try not to be on the phone and and on that stuff way too much, Mm -hmm. but it is fun. Oh, so for sure. We're doing it and she's hilarious. And so I think like, I'm not, not to say my daughter has like complete control over my uh, world. (laughs) Ninety uh, percent. Uh huh. Um, I do. I will say, after blogging, I spent five years blogging. You did, yeah. So I went from This American Life to the Hairpin to Jezebel, right? Okay, and then to DTR. And I've been making radio stuff and doing documentary work in the meantime, but right. I also was like a daily blogger. And what were you covering? Were you covering kill. like entertainment? Were you covering? I will like- cover anything that I can write about in the next fifteen minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Like anything that somebody would read yeah, that I can write in 15 minutes. Or, you know, I did longer pieces too. But that will just kill your interest in the internet entirely. Uh-huh. I mean, I have like, I am on social media. I mostly, I'm, I'm like, I like like rappers, whatever really? rappers are doing. <laughs> really? And their wives. Really? Yeah, like Gucci Mane's wife. She's I don't so know pretty. anything about this. She has a wig company. <laughs> Her name's Keisha. She's so pretty. She's okay. so pretty. Yeah. You started answering this question being like, I don't know. And now you have a very specific <laughs> rapper's wife. Yeah. They're so nice and pretty. <laughs> I've never heard know. this before. That's yeah, good to know. Have, like They're just the most supportive people and they're so pretty. That's I'm just going to keep saying they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so I pretty. now have to go check this out. This is a world I haven't explored before. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, I just like hate looking online um that's why I go for like really sensational news like I read daily mail like just yeah, to yeah, see because yeah. I'm like tell me a story oh yeah you know, I'm a big already... d-listed fan yeah uh, just it's just snarky stuff. garbage yeah I uh, love it that's I love it. my whole brand and I also don't listen to podcasts you don't I was gonna say I mean I I have to be in a mood Not to listen cool. to a podcast which yeah. is ironic that you know I'll do it one, on but... assignment you yeah, know yeah, somebody's yeah. like you gotta listen to this but I, I got advice from my um my friend and, and former editor at the Hairpin, Edith Zimmerman, when I started working there as a blogger, she was like, you should probably stop reading blogs. Really? Just because they're going to influence my way of writing. Um, so True. I did that. And then somehow I just transferred that over to the podcast. <laughs> where I'm like, no. I don't really want to listen. But that makes sense because then subconsciously you, there's always a fear that you're like taking and you're borrowing. Yeah, or like I'm not something. doing what's cool yeah. or like P- I'm not giving people what they want. And instead right. I'm just like, la, 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 la. if I like this, you might. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's totally fair. That makes so much sense. Um, yeah, because you always, I mean, you want your thing that you're creating, your content to feel authentically like passionate, you yeah. know, if, if, for you to feel authentically passionate about it. So that can come off through like listeners. And then like, on listeners. top of that, it's kind of like the, if I worked at Taco Bell, would I only eat Taco Bell? Like, um, True. Oh, I would. that's a I great. Would. Okay, s- first of all, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm not definitely Taco Bell. <laughs> um, but no, but you know what I mean? I, I leave work. I have these things on 
all day long. All day long. Yeah. And I, the last thing I want when I'm not working on my own tape is mm-hmm. to listen to somebody else's tape and like hear bad edits. And well, then, then like, okay, uh, so what's your go-to? What are you watching? What are you? Um, I watch your- all the Real Housewives. Yeah. Because okay. I'm not a dummy. Okay. <laughs> Let's go down this rabbit hole because yeah. this is my favorite. I love the Real Housewives. Did Which you see genre Camille's is your- wedding? No, pictures. I didn't. Okay, Kyle was in the wedding. Okay, and that's so was cute. Camille's daughter, which was really sweet. Very I don't know sweet. who the other bitches were, but <laughs> they did, they their dresses were bad. bad. Like, but they that's were perfectly like, on brand. Like mother of the bride dresses, like black with lace up here, but like it's, not cool. It's all know. confusing. Uh, every season, uh, especially in New York, I think Bethany called out one time, like in an episode. Uh, she was like, what the fuck are we all wearing? Know, and they literally yeah. looked like this weird, like, Goodwill 80s prom dress scenario. Carol's like, gotten kind of nutso with her clothes Carol's lately. going like, off what something. are you doing? I don't know. I mean, I like funny clothes. I do, too. As you know, I showed up here in my funny pants. <laughs> but, like, you know, you can either, like, look good or you can, like, make people laugh. Yeah. But I, I try not to do, like, the just, I don't care. You know? <laughs> it's like, I have an opportunity here to yeah. both be comfortable and hilarious. What's your favorite um, franchise? Of Real Housewives? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so hard. They're all so my precious baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It I is love difficult. Them. I like Beverly Hills and New York kind of equally. Yeah. Um, and then I think there are individual characters on Atlanta that I wish I were just like around me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I like think- I want to hang out with Candy. Oh, God. I mean, talk about a successful businesswoman, entrepreneur. Um, I think that Sonia is like one of the greatest comedians of our time. She's so funny. She's so funny. She is unreal to me that I'm like, I just look at her in the background of every single scene that's happening because she's doing something. Yeah, I'm like, is this a bit half the time when she's talking about, you know, just like showing up to a party naked or whatever? And I think it is kind of a bit and I appreciate it. (laughs) <laughs> a thousand percent. And then she'll go into like a deep emotional talk about her daughter. Yeah, and you're she's like, got what? showmanship. She <laughs> understands that she has a platform and she's on television uh-huh. and she needs to bring it. Oh, her and Ramona. These other people are just like, I don't know why these cameras are following me around. And she's like, no, look at me. <laughs> I get a little nervous because I feel like they've become too self-aware about mm-hmm. like their narrative in the whole yeah. series of things that I'm like, no, I missed the pure days where you didn't even know how ridiculous you're being right yeah. now. Yeah. But now it's like you spot the cameras, you know, and like you need to make a scene about something. Yeah. So it's a oh, God, I'm so glad that you like that. That's what I watch. Let me think of what else. Any kind of dystopian future show or movie. OK, I like those. Are, it's a very Doom. wide spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot more of them now, yeah. which is great. And that might include documentaries, you know, but like mm-hmm. anything where like the end of the world is happening in a weird way. OK, I like that. I also like anything where it's a man alone. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> what? It's my, that's my favorite genre of anything. Like anything is a, is a, a man single alone. Man? <laughs> what do you mean? It's just, I don't know. Like moon. Like 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 um, a guy rediscovering himself. I don't. A guy like facing a challenge with no help. Oh, you know? man like, versus nature. So like yeah, kind seen, of. Like or man of, versus machine, right. but like by himself. <laughs> have you seen All Is Lost? No, with what Robert is that? Redford, he's like on a boat and which is like taking. That is water. what I'm talking about. So like that cast is what away. I, that Castaway. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna. Okay. Was, yeah, I love it. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, this is a very specific genre. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't make enough podcasts like that. <laughs> just a guy talking to himself or his soccer ball or Jack. whatever. <laughs> Jack, I'm just gonna leave these mics set up so when we leave, you can just have a little moment to yourself. Yes. All right. <laughs> I love it. I uh, subscribed. Listen. Subscribed. I don't um, listen to any other podcast with that one. That is so. If, okay. So if you, knowing that you have these two genres of things that you <laughs> indulge in, they're both the uh, same thing, actually. If basically, you think about it. yeah. Sonia is just a man alone <laughs> trying to figure it out. Um, is there a reality show that you would ever be on? No. Yeah. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Fair answer. I mean, maybe I would be on one like about hairdressing, but I would be the hair model. Oh. Okay. And I wouldn't talk. Like if there was something in it for me, so but you're that's just like, like the most so I can think of. So you just want to go get a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for free. <laughs> If there's a free haircut in it, I'll do it. But <laughs> That's that, the genre of reality TV I would like to be no. honest. This but, is already reality enough for me. Like this is already like nerve wracking and weird. Oh, to yeah, me. yeah. Yeah. So, well, do you have people like, <laughs> because um because you work in old school radio, quote unquote. Yeah. Do you ever have people that recognize your voice and like ask you like, are you Jay Marie? Like they don't recognize my voice. They do that thing where. This is so stupid. But when we did the DTR podcast, my yeah. face was in the app as an ad, but it looked like a, a profile. 
Okay. So people would swipe on it and then it would be like, you matched with the podcast or whatever, but it was my face. Uh huh. So during that time, I got a lot of texts from like exes being like, look what happened again. <laughs> just really? Like, mm-hmm. okay. um, yeah. <laughs> seriously. Like Whoa, multiple weird. people being like, oh, that's always fun. We're back together <laughs> or whatever. Um, but I think like the occasional times that my face has been out there, I am like not recognizable. I am not a celebrity. I am not on camera. Like I don't, this is wrong. I should be in radio. This is why are you doing this? Um, (laughs) They're all made of cardboard. Don't worry. This is all a hoax. (laughs) But like the fact that my face is out there occasionally, that if someone happens to see me in real life they think we're like friends or something like oh, they yeah, don't you have an intimate relationship with all why they know who i oh, am at all so and in their brain they're just like ah this is my old like, this is a familiar face that she I worked know. at the cafe you know and i'll be like no actually i'll tell them what i do and they're yeah. like no that's not it that's not it <laughs> You must know my daughter. Some your daughter must know my daughter. That's what it always is. Like That's, our kids, I must have met you at the playground. I'm like, highly unlikely, but okay. That's yeah. so funny. And also no, completely awkward. They don't recognize my voice. Not at all. No, I, and I honestly I think people who are like solely radio personalities, when you do meet them in real life, like it is jarring. Like you can't yeah. you kind of can't place it. Right. Like their face, having a face with it, like throws you way off. Yeah. You just That's imagine a voice experience. box. Yeah. Yeah. That only happened to me one time up in like Vancouver years ago. Mm-hmm. This woman at a restaurant love afterwards. Canada. I love Canada. She, yeah. It was like the <laughs> coolest, weirdest moment that, yeah, she like waited on us. And then like literally at the very end of the meal, she was like, one of my coworkers knows your YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. I've only listened to your podcast. I thought your voice sounded familiar, but I have no idea what you look like. Mm-hmm. And she was like this middle-aged woman that was like not from, she was from like Europe somewhere. And I was like, you are not what I would expect to listen to my best podcast. Friends. Where is she? She's <laughs> here. It's Jack Ferry. That's how we met. It was really great. Um, okay. Let's say hypothetically. Oh, I love it. Already. You, <laughs> Let's do it. Let's get hypothetical. If you were forced to run an unethical pyramid scheme, for mm. lack of a better phrase, what product would you try to push? And this is literally, that's the okay. guy. Well, we have to like um, assume I'm evil. Yes. Correct. Okay. So let's it would assume be that like your moral compass doesn't exist. Some cure for cancer. Yeah. Some cure for cancer. Yes. Like a fake cure for cancer. Like you know, you <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. You dialed in on that. I <laughs> would appeal to like emotions and like the fear of death. Like I would just uh-huh. go all in for like a vitamin. And okay. That's, and that's how those things work, right? They play on your emotions. That's the reason why people totally. sink so much of their own money. To- oh, totally. yeah. I mean, it's like, because what's the... And my slogan would be like, what, you want your kid to die? Or something like that. <laughs> sign up oh, like man. if I had no morals this is a hypothetical Grace. yeah this you is said a it was. full okay. hypothetical <laughs> you haven't thought about this you haven't been planning this uh, but you know the, the truth is like in most cases the product doesn't matter right yeah it's just appealing to like the you know the insecurity in well, the it's person not where the money comes from for yeah. the most part like it's not you know like the, the leggings comes- aren't like these are the best leggings ever and in fact the like those leggings are horrible right and fall apart in five minutes and yeah. the designs are bad <laughs> so why is that a big popular company yeah it's out of guilt because you sign up and then you <laughs> signed your mom up and then you got to stick with it oh no i know i used to like i said i watched my mom like fill out her own avon orders mm-hmm. and then i would have to she would drive us to an apartment and i would have to run upstairs to this random apartment i have no idea who Child lived labor. in there See? and i literally have to throw an <laughs> envelope under this random door once a week and then i'd be like in hindsight later on be like is my mom a drug dealer yeah, yeah. like what what's was going that? on what was that she would literally after school be like here you go take the like manila she envelope. wrote her own child then yeah and all yeah. i knew is that we got a fuck ton of tiny little lipsticks around <laughs> our house everywhere are there any exceptions though because like i think tupperware is actually i'm gonna ask useful. that guy on monday okay i'm gonna ask the guy from the dsa monday like ex- explain yeah. to me and describe a good one versus a bad one In yeah our reporting so far you know, first of all, what do you mean by that? Like, what do you mean by is there are there exceptions? Like, are there exceptions like products that aren't horrible that I would like? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, we did an episode about my friend who works for this bag company. Um, and I saw some bags and I was like, these aren't bad. Yeah, like, they're cute. I'll buy these bags. Whatever. Sure. But it doesn't matter if your business model is based on appealing to people's emotions and getting fees out of them that don't have anything to do with the product. 
Yeah. And those go really deep. It's not just the sign up fee. It's like, then you have a, a website fee. Then you have to come to a training and pay for that. Uh-huh. Then you have to, you know, and there's, they, they keep stacking in front of you opportunities for you to give the corporation money yeah. in ways that don't make you money or, you know, have anything to do with your quote unquote business. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's the problem. <laughs> no, I remember I went to a Tony Robbins event like a what? couple of years oh, ago. No. Girl, yeah. <laughs> and you survived. I went there. Um and I was fascinated by it, but I also went in with this like pure cynicism about it because I had worked with like self help people in the past mm-hmm. um and just thought it was all kind of this scheme to get people's money. And then, you know, literally the first day after like 10 hours in a room of listening to him talk to like 3,000 people, you walk on hot coals. And it was like insane and weird. And like, yeah, everyone walks on hot coals. We all went back to our hotel rooms and we're like, you guys got blisters? We got blisters. A couple people went to the hospital and everyone's fine, but you're like built up so much. Did you hear the episode about William Penn Patrick and Holiday Magic? Okay. Tell me. I'm going to give you the synopsis, but you have to listen to it. So yeah. this guy like in the 60s was a maniac uh-huh. and like came out of that kind of like um, power of positive thinking kind yeah. of world. And he's he um, apparently he was walking by a garage in um, Northern California somewhere and smelled this amazing smell. And a man <laughs> was sitting in a garage with like boxes and boxes of um, like fruit scented beauty products, kind of like Bath, Bath and Body Works or okay. something. But it was it was called something else at the time. Um, and this William Penn Patrick went in and like, was like, I'll buy it all off of you right now. And like gave the guy like a ton of money and bought all the products and then started an MLM. Um, and he was like a maniac. And then he, he somehow, I don't know why you would think a garage full of fruit scented beauty stuff <laughs> would, would somehow sell if you just took it out of there or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like the guy couldn't get rid of it, uh-huh. but he's like, don't, it doesn't matter. I have a business model where that does not matter. We oh just my- need a product. So then he started a program for his employees uh-huh. that was like these re- office retreats. But then it was it was like they would abuse people, essentially, like lock, like bury them alive or like tie them to a cross. And when Holy he went shit. on trial for this, he, they, he, they were like, how did you how did you put people up on the cross? And he, he said something like, well, how would you normally? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. How would you normally bury someone alive? Give me a break. You know? <laughs> How did you do it? Oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. But the craziest thing is that literally like the day three, when you fully are like, I I understand fundamentally like all of the positive aspects that people could take out of this in different realms of their life that they might need a certain thing or mm-hmm. need a motivation, need someone to talk to, need this environment. But there's like this one moment on like the third day where you're all like laying on the floor meditating and they have like all these audio cues. With our blisters fully, <laughs> we're okay, we're healing, we're saving our lives. And then they literally start, as you're like in this deep meditative state, start listing like how much their next program costs. Oh my God. And I was like, this is hypnosis so yes. that everyone just wakes up and goes, I'm, here's my money. Here's my yep. checkbook. I was, I literally like woke up out of that and was just like, does no one else hear that this commercial? Is... Did anyone else hear that commercial in our meditation? Uh, <laughs> I'll collect your twelve hundred dollars if you guys yeah. want to come to me with that. I can't that. believe you lasted three days. Yeah, That's I impressive. had. I was in Florida. I had no way out. So <laughs> That's how they get you. That's how they get you. <laughs> they put you in a room and they say there are. You can leave whenever you want. Right. Yeah. And that's a little thing that they're like, kind of the same mm, thing. As now these, this is a challenge. How long companies. can I stay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. oh, so nuts. Okay. We're going to take one last break. When we get back, we have a bunch of internet questions for you. Okay. Twitter <laughs> has some things they want to know. We'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Not Too Deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by MeUndies. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Rather than spending all that money going out to fancy restaurants, why not just hang out in your underwear, courtesy of MeUndies, made from the coveted micromodal fabric, which is three times softer than cotton. MeUndies genuinely feels like heaven against your skin. Men and women can each choose from four different cuts, all of which are available in classic colors and adventurous prints, including new V-Day prints, which release every Tuesday, but why stop there? This year, MeUndies is launching their V-Day prints in lounge pants and onesies as well. Both are made from the same micromodal fabric as their undies. And as someone that has tested this underwear, I can tell you, 
as a personal endorsement. It is absolutely fantastic. I don't want to go into too many details, um, but it's great. MeUndies has a great offer for you, our beautiful listeners. First time purchases get 15% off and free shipping when you order MeUndies. It's a no brainer. Get 15% off a pair of the most comfortable undies you will ever put on. Free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee when you go to MeUndies.com slash grace. That's MeUndies.com slash grace. Uh, Jane, before we get into the Twitter questions, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every single guest okay. that's on the podcast. Okay. Um, and the first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Cold spaghetti? Mm-hmm. Hitler. Now, I I mean, uh, <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> Does everyone say Hitler? Yeah. And we've had a handful yeah, we, of Hitlers. Although that wouldn't be enough. Of cold spaghetti. I mean, I want it to be like, I want it to like, you know, have you want some it to be meaning <laughs> or something. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, uh, there's a lot of people that are dead that I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like them being dead is way worse than cold spaghetti. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. so that's, I've already gotten there you go. what I needed. <laughs> I feel like you can do it to this man on Monday. Oh, you know, if I was British, you yeah. know, how they do the pie thing, like Pierce Morgan just got oh, yeah. pied. That's so good. <laughs> that's so cool. I have so much respect for people who pie people. <laughs> Still, I'm like that's just that's, that's the move. Yeah, we gotta develop that more into this show. We yeah, gotta fold that in here. Yeah. Um, okay, the other question I ask everyone is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or close call, but you can only use three words or three small phrases. So, for instance, mine is college jogging front lawn. Um, okay, three words or phrases. Yeah, or some combination of the the two. Um, Coachella. The weekend. Wine. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I have to say, I fully appreciate that you immediately had a story because mm-hmm. there are some people that don't. And those people, oh, thank you for being guests, but I do not agree with how you live your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's get into some Twitter questions here. Um, someone wants to know what's the weirdest thing you've ever smelled? Oh my God, I actually have a story. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, this question might go nowhere, but turns when out- When I was moving out here, uh-huh. we stopped. We It was just like a like a straight shot. Like we weren't taking breaks or anything. Drove cross country. Uh-huh. Okay. Ended up in a town called Lexington, Nebraska. Mm-hmm. So sorry, Lexington, Nebraska, <laughs> that I'm going to do this. They're huge fans of the podcast, so you. drag them. <laughs> we drive in at like three o'clock in the morning. Okay. There's a light mist in the air. I see two guys jogging. Like it looks like a, I mean, it's like a rural kind of factory town. Okay. Um, and there's a Holiday Inn Express. Park the truck. Step out of the truck. Jump back in the truck. <laughs> like it was a scent in the air that <laughs> like punched me in the face that I wanted to <laughs> oh immediately God. throw up. It what? was- so intense <laughs> that I was like, I know we're tired and I know the next hotel isn't for like three more hours and we might die, but we cannot ever oh. get out of this car again. And we what did. What was the smell? Mm. <laughs> so we, go, we got inside. I just like covered my face and ran into uh-huh. the, and we booked a room. And as I was like leaving the front desk, I was like, I am so sorry mm-hmm. to do this, but what the fuck is outside? <laughs> <laughs> like, and the only thing I could think of before she told me what it was, was like maybe a f- flowering plant that I've never heard of or something. You know how like there's those death plants that bloom like uh-huh. one? I was like, maybe it's a bloom and like everyone around here is used to it because those guys were jogging. Corpse flower or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. what I thought. It was something like that that I just, I've never like spent much time in Nebraska in the middle of the night in this, <laughs> in September. Uh-huh. <laughs> what do you think I would have heard about it? She goes... It's the chicken plant, and on Thursdays they burn. <gasps> what? Ugh. That was the Wait. sentence. And I was like, thank you very much. I'm going to sleep. And she said, okay, just keep the air conditioner on. Whatever. She had told me how to keep it out. Oh, my but God. It's the chicken plant, and on <gasps> Thursdays they burn. Oh. I don't know anything else. I ran <laughs> to my room, slept for six hours, got back on the road. Like, it was fine. It was gone in the morning. Yeah. It was gone. But I was the just smell like. smell of burnt feathers was gone. Uh, <laughs> I think everyone it was is burning this rotten is... carcasses or something because uh, it was, there was a, God. it was more than just, it didn't smell like grilled chicken. Yeah. I was going to say, you're not getting. At all. Yeah. It was like. It's not a Chick-fil-A. No, it was not. It air. was not like a ton of grilled chicken in the. And then I just felt so horrible for the people who lived there that weren't That's that were there normal. before Ugh. the chicken. Like, what if the chicken factory just came to your yard and then was like, "Sorry about Thursdays. Your Thursdays are over. <laughs> <laughs> like, you never get a Thursday again." Oh man, oh, that is. And for someone, I'm sure, like 
it doesn't, she's probably explained this so many times, it doesn't affect her no. anymore. That's just like their night. Yeah. yeah. Oh, That's, the chicken plan on Thursday, they burn. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> she probably should have a card to hand it to Sorry, people. Nebraska. <laughs> um, okay, so wants to know what is your most recurring dream? It's so boring. <laughs> I'm Go sorry. On. Um, <laughs> I'm late because I can't get ready to go do the thing I have to do. Oh, you're late for well, like an that appointment. One, and then there's also I never graduated high school, which okay. isn't really a dream. It's... I'm like, that's your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did eventually figure it out. <laughs> no, it's like that dream where it's like the very last day of school. And then I realized that I've never been to any of the classes. <gasps> I don't have my homework because I didn't go to the classes. I don't know the combination to my oh. locker, which would allow me to get my books out to fake like I'd been to a class. <gasps> and I have to take a test or I'm not going to graduate. And then I have to like walk into the classroom and I'm humiliated by because the teacher knows that I've never been uh -huh. there and like no one recognizes me and I'm just like, hand me the test. And then I wake up. So there's that Whoa. one. And then the other one is getting ready to go somewhere. And I like my shoes don't fit. My pants don't fit. My hair is fucked up. Like oh, no. everything that can go wrong goes wrong. And then I'm finally like walking out the door and like the sun's coming up, you know, and oh, I'm no. like, why did that take 10 hours? And I'm Wait. never going to have fun. I don't know what it's about. You tell me. Have I was going to say, have you looked into what <laughs> no. these mean? No, really? no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just take a shower and go to work. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just take a cold fucking shower. I drink a bottle of scotch. Yeah. And I go to work. Moving on. Coming <laughs> through. Um, okay. So I want to know what's your favorite Taylor Allison Swift song? Are you a Taylor Swift fan? No. no? Oh, okay. I didn't know. No, like, no, no. Sometimes I'm like, these questions seem specifically tailored, <laughs> but literally. <laughs> I actually read that and I was like, Taylor Allison Swift? No, Is this a Taylor Swift? I don't know. <laughs> that's what I was like. I was like, did Jane, is Jane obsessed she with her middle like name? A, she seems like a fine, she's trying, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but no, musically that doesn't, I don't feel it. Who, who's like, what's your go-to music? I like rap music. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> Lest we forget. Yeah. And I call it rap music. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's what's some the, other. What's the greatest like concert experience you've had? Honestly, it was the one where I almost peed my pants that I was just telling you about. Really? Yeah, it was a weekend. I had no idea that guy could sing like that. And here he was like live. And I was like, whoa, this is that's why it was great, because I've never been to a concert where I was converted during the concert. Oh, OK. Like usually you either know the band or right. you hate the band. Like you either know them and you're on board or you hear them live for ha like five seconds. Sure. And you're like, Goodbye. Yeah, no, it was that show. I was really like, I think I was crying. I, it was like really <laughs> a religious emotional. experience. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Oh, that, that's a huge endorsement and then for the I, weekend. I like, looked into him and I was like, okay, I'm just going to stop <laughs> and continue to like the music. <laughs> um, someone wants to know what's uh, her best pickup line that might actually work. Oh, I just straight up asked people out. Oh, yeah. My current partner, I just said, would you like to go on a date with me? I lied to get your contact information. <laughs> <laughs> That's ultimately flattering, though. And he said, sure. Do uh, have you had some like, have you uh, been on the other hand of getting the worst pickup line? I don't know if I differentiate between a pickup line and just men talking <laughs> to me. <laughs> That's obnoxious to say, but you know what I mean? You can't like, ever what really are they tell. doing? What are they doing? Yeah. Why are they still What's talking? What's the end game? Yeah, the, I know what it is. Yeah. I, can I know see what you're happening. doing here. Has there been any standout lines that are cringeworthy? Because I feel I can't little... even think of it. I don't know. I, I, I'm also not the kind of, unfortunately, which is why I have to ask people out. I'm not the most approachable. Same. Woman. No, I'm very much closed off. Um, I yeah. think in a. I don't mean to be. I'm fun. I'm having fun, you know, but then I think people, I think I. I have closed door energy. Do I look like a bitch? Is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't. It doesn't happen that much. No, same. I I feel a little like sad in hindsight that I'm like, I don't have many like pickup line scenarios. And I think it's because I don't give off the this like open energy to people in social situations like I that. I think I get negged probably, oh, but yeah. I don't recognize that. Like it doesn't work mm -hmm. on me. So mm -hmm. I, it's only like in hindsight that I go, I think that guy was trying to hit on me, <laughs> but um, he was just like being really mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think guys get confused with how to talk to women. Yeah. Um, so wants to know what's your go-to karaoke song? Okay. I like a prop. <laughs> Or a, or a trick. So you like to put on I a like show. a trick. Or, well, I like something that distracts from me. I actually can sing. It turns out I did karaoke recently, and like everybody was like, "That was weird." Um, 
we did. You were acting all nervous. I do get very nervous, but I guess I can sing. But I like to do um, Eternal Flame. Oh, because it's very easy to sing, and there's it's not like a ton of range. Um, and uh-huh. then also I can just hold a candle and like do this, you know. <laughs> so yeah. you do like a full music video yeah. while you're performing, or I pick a song that the audience will sing for me. Yeah, you know, like just a friend, a good call the and response. One. Just talk, 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 and then everyone does the singing. Oh yeah, a good call and response song is always helpful at karaoke. Yeah. It's a yeah. group effort yep. at the end of the day. Yep. Um, someone wants to know: Do people ever mistake you for someone else? No, but I get compared to celebrities solely based on whatever haircut I have. Really? Yeah, I'm one of those people that if my hair is really short, that's just like whoever is short in the news right now. (laughs) Whoever has short hair in the news right now, short brown hair, they're like, that's who you are today. Oh, wow. So that's, yeah, it kind of like moves around with my haircut. Have you had a fangirl moment since you've been out here in Los Angeles? Like, have you been at any events or seen anyone or... Like, are you asking if I go to Villa Blanca regularly? Um, have you been to Sir? <laughs> yeah, you can just go to Villa Blanca and look at Lisa. Yeah, she's Lisa there. Lisa Vanderpump is just sitting there. She's there all the time. Ken's there all the time. The dogs are there all the time. <laughs> and Which then seems people like just a health show up. violation, but you know they they're allowed. He's not touching the food. Yeah, that's let's true. be honest. <laughs> And I'm not eating it. I'm having a glass of wine and just staring. It was like, waiting. yeah, I've only been there once. Um, and it was like before like a pitch meeting. And so I went with my friend and we got wine before the meeting to pump ourselves up and like just also see Villa Blanca for the first time. Mm-hmm. I say a little dirtier than I thought it was going to be. It's dingy. Dust. Yeah, like and dingy. the W on their bathroom door is the Wu-Tang W. Wait, seriously? Yes. <laughs> it is. That's a fun little nugget for everyone. I don't know who did that, but I like them. <laughs> it's cute a, but yeah it's too much white stuff and people's yeah. butts are on it it's and a lot it's just, of yeah it feels very like palm springs in the 80s kind of uh but decor if you're gonna have white be your main like mm-hmm. color in a restaurant yeah keep you gotta clean. recycle that shit you gotta like move it out yeah get some new white you stuff. gotta update it you gotta keep it fresh yeah because it gets a little dusty a little like fingerprinty everywhere mm-hmm. on all the menus and i'm like i've worked at a lot of chilies and so this is just a more elegant chilies, right? It's like <laughs> chilies, but a, like a bar mitzvah, basically. Well, they have like deep fried spring rolls and things like that that <laughs> yeah. are like not, they're like the frozen ones from chilies, yeah, which are like, great, by the way. <laughs> Don't oh, get me wrong. I so will delicious. eat a molten chocolate cake every yeah. <laughs> day of the week. Um, okay. Someone wants to know, here's a very lighthearted final question for you. What's your biggest regret? Or oh, lighthearted. <laughs> <laughs> but they said, what is one thing you wish you tried when given the opportunity? And this can also go for a nut, like necessarily in the past or like something that you want to do in the future. Um, back to school. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm, I probably should be more regretful. Um, <laughs> but I find the idea a little bit of, of like obnoxious yeah. because, uh, whatever you did instead of the thing that you did, there's no telling that that was a better idea oh, or true. like the not doing it or doing it. Yeah. yeah you yeah. don't know how anything's going to go. Like you really only know later if you liked it or not. That's so true. <laughs> so you can choose things and then they can go poorly, but then you could have, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's hard to, for me to even like wrap my head around what a regret really is. I guess like, like a general regret about my personality <laughs> is I, Ah, uh, this is this, this is, is how big. I love to this end. This is a big one. I love to end podcasts with like the guests just feeling really depressed about just themselves, vulnerable <laughs> and flawed. Uh, uh. No, I think um, I think that I have spent I've too many times like waited to do something or made a decision about what I wanted to do based on my partner's feelings. Yeah, I'm so with you. And that's same for me. Yeah, over it now. Yeah, it's too late. <laughs> yeah, but I, don't, I think that's like a huge thing to acknowledge. Like mm-hmm. that's a big trend in my world. I probably lot. would have had a kid a lot sooner. And I'm not yeah. saying that would have been, again, not a regret. Not like it, it would have been just better or worse. But narrative. I I do regret um, making so many big life decisions mm. based, not based on what they want. I mean, I wanted them, but yeah. like in the time that it took me to convince them that or, yeah. or like for, to get people on board or just waiting a lot of time waiting yeah for other people who then are like gone eventually anyway right <laughs> that you're like oh man had I just like fully supported my own thoughts and beliefs and wants exactly. like where would I be and but I guess I'm thinking that because I have a daughter now yeah you know but and- that's good I think that's a really like 
it's almost like kind of backwardsly motivating that it's like, don't wait around for someone else to confirm the things that you want for yourself. Right. Right. And I think, cause then you will, you might feel like you miss out or you might feel like, um, especially if that person's not there anymore. Like, what did I do this? Like, why did I wait? I wasted time. Somebody taught me, I guess when I was a young child and I'm not going to say it's my mom cause I don't remember, but I feel <laughs> like I got this chip installed that was like, don't decide what you exactly want until it's until someone says it's okay. So it's confirmed with a partner. Yeah. Yeah. Or a boss or any, you know, like yeah. that, somebody else says that's okay for you to do that. I yeah. don't know. I, um, I was thinking about that a lot with my kid where I'm like the situation I'm in now where it's, I just live alone and mm -hmm. she's there and I'm a single mom and that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and I'm working and I pay the bills and all that. I'm yeah. like, Oh, I could have done this like any time. But that's good. Like I could have done that. If this was where I was going to end up anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have been doing this the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Not but also it's the like. The whole time, but you know. But it's also like, yeah, it's good to admit to yourself and like just keep that in the back of your mind of like checking in with like, am I doing this for me or am I doing this because my like classical conditioning in my brain tells me I need permission from someone to yeah. be able to like. I'm always doing it for me, but I'm also hesitant until I get the cosine. Yeah. Uh, that resonates I very strongly with that me. way anymore. Um, well, I'm happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> and I hope you take that into the future. Jane, thank you so much for being here. Um, we're going to give you the gift that we give everyone oh. for being a guest on the podcast is a, um, it's a fortune cookie that's just for you. I love fortune cookies. You don't have to eat it. I'm um, going to. Oh, good. Can I yeah. open it? Yeah. yeah. Right now. Please. You can read the fortune. Right, I have the superstition. I'm not superstitious. I'm okay. only stu superstitious about dumb shit. Same. So, um, like, oh my God, I thought it wasn't in here. Look. Oh, that we pranked you. Like, psych, it's <laughs> <Yeah>. empty. <laughs> not only am I going to make you feel vulnerable, I'm not going to give you a fucking fortune. <laughs> no, it's just crammed in one side. Um, I have the superstition that whatever the fortune is, it won't come true if you haven't eaten the whole cookie first. Um, oh, okay. But I don't want to do that right now. Yeah, you okay. can. You do you. Again, no regrets, right? Right. <laughs> wow, this is, what is this, a novel? <laughs> yeah, we crammed Moby Dick into this fortune cookie. <clears throat> Some of us... <laughs> may have subscribed to the dream and are a few episodes in still waiting to hear what teeth falling out in our dreams mean. <laughs> We're slowly realizing now that's not what the show is about. Mm. There's still time. There's still time. Yeah. <laughs> There's still time. There is still time. There's another um, season coming up. So. Well, with that, where can people find everything that you're up to if they don't already know? Um, you can look at littleeverywhere.com. Okay. And so all of our shows are on there, including the dream. Um, the dream is available Wherever you get your podcast, yeah. as you know, the as, outline. It's true, though. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It really is available. Um, <laughs> and yeah. And I'm at C Jane Marie, S E E Jane Marie on the interwebs. Awesome. Thank yeah. you again so much. Also, offline, I got to get Nan's information. Uh, but thank you, Jane. There's an Easter egg about Nan. Oh, God. I know. Once we turn the mics off. Oh, my God. Okay. I can't wait. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you next time on Not Too Deep. Too Deep. Too Deep. Too Deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too, Not too deep with Grace Helbig. Not too deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer and directed by Jack Ferry. Producer and editor Melissa D. Mons. Writing by Diane Kang. Production assistance by Katrina Henning. Post production sound by Chris Henry. And an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. Music.